This video is all about shooting in manual. Being accountable for the decision, the technical decisions that you make when you're out shooting. And very, very quickly by doing that, leveling up not only the technical side of your photography, but also the creative. Good morning, everyone. I'm here in Alpe de Suisi, a beautiful, breathtaking, incredible part of the Italian Dolomites. I've just finished teaching my first workshop of the autumn season, and I got another workshop starting in the afternoon today. And I just thought that I would try to make a quick teaching video out here in this incredible landscape. I really want to talk to you folks about decisions and accountability in your photography. A lot of people, they seem to have a preference to shoot in aperture priority or shutter speed priority or for that matter in full automatic. I always suggest to my students to stay away from that because what happens when you shoot in either of those modes is that the camera makes a lot of decisions for you and when some of those decisions don't pan out and you end up with a subpar image from a technical perspective maybe you have the wrong shutter speed the wrong aperture or the wrong ISO whatever it may be you blame the camera because the camera made the decision. But what if there was a way that we could only blame ourselves and by blaming ourselves, we could learn much faster. Well, of course, there is such a way as cold shooting in manual and shooting in manual doesn't have to be hard. Actually, what I'm going to show you today, I'm going to show you my own process flow for shooting in manual, a process flow that is basically idiot proof and the reason that i'm saying idiot proof is because i shoot on a lot of expeditions i shoot in places where i might be tired i might be hungry i might be dehydrated mentally i might be completely spent in those situations i will make mistakes well to be telling you the truth i don't make many mistakes anymore and the reason that i don't make many mistakes is because i have an idiot proof workflow. A workflow that works in every situation, every time. I can't screw it up and my images, all of them come out from a technical perspective the way I want them. Creatively, well that's a different matter, but you know we need to start somewhere. If we can have 95% of our images to be technically perfect, well that means we can ignore the technical process and focus on the creative process. Because in truth, in honesty, in reality, it's the creative process that is really fun and it's the, it's the creative process that can be really challenging. What we need to do to get perfect exposures every time is to shoot in manual. And shooting in manual isn't that complicated because we really only have one thing that we need to care about and that is the shutter speed. And I'm going to explain why that is. And of course, right now, we're talking only about landscape photography. When I do wildlife photography, when I shoot people on the streets, well, with the camera, I don't shoot people, uh, or when I'm doing something like that, I might not be shooting everything in manual. I quite often use auto ISO because that allows me to work much faster because the camera is faster at making decisions than I am. But when it comes to landscape, photography. I don't want to be fast. I want to be slow. I want to be methodological. I want to be accurate. I want to have control. And that is what I achieve in the manual mode. And you can't see much of the view here through the camera because the, the, the beautiful view that we had, well, it disappeared. We're now inside of a cloud. The fog just rolled in. Yeah, we can't see anything. But anyway, we can still talk about the theory. So when you're shooting in full manual, you only really have three settings to care about. And of course, I'm shooting in RAW, right? So to begin with, we have ISO 100, base ISO. The only reason to go beyond base ISO in landscape photography is when you have either a condition or a scene that requires it. For example, you could be like this, a very long lens on a tripod, and it might be windy. In that case, I might bump my ISO to 400 or 800 or something like that, so that I can have a faster shutter speed. Or if I'm shooting handheld, well, it could very well be that I am moving the camera so much that my images wouldn't be sharp. The next thing we have is our aperture. 
When it comes to selecting the right aperture, for me it's always somewhere between f8 and f11, unless the scene or the condition dictates something different. When it comes to selecting the sweet spot for your aperture, full-frame cameras like this one, they're typically sharpest in the center at somewhere f4 to f5.6. And that is of course dependent on the lens that you have on. But when it comes to actually having corner to corner sharpness across your frame, it's typically not f4 to f5.6. It's typically around well, f8 or thereabouts. And in addition to that, you also want the maximum amount of depth of field in your frame. So you want your foreground all the way to the, let's say, mountains in the background to be sharp. And to achieve that, you want to have a higher aperture number, like for example, f8 to f11. It's important to note that if you go beyond, let's say, f8, f11 or thereabouts, something called diffraction sets in. What diffraction really does to your images is that it makes it soft. We don't need to go into the technicalities why it happens. It does happen, so I never, unless I'm looking for sun stars or something specific like that, go beyond f11 when I'm exposing my images. But if you're instead using an APS-C camera, the sweet spot typically sits at around f5.6 and f8, and that will give you the kind of equivalent in terms of depth of field that you would have had at f8 to f11 on a full frame. And that, again, if you're talking medium format, is probably around f11 to f13. But be mindful of diffraction again. Depth of field is what you want, right? You don't want soft scenes from diffraction, and you want edge to edge, corner to corner sharpness. It's all a compromise. For me, full frame, the compromise, the best part to sit, f8 to f11. The final thing we have to worry about is our shutter speed. Because the ISO is given, base ISO, unless the conditions dictate something else. The aperture for me is given, my sweet spot, f8 to f11. It's a given number, right? This basically means that shooting in manual is very similar to shooting in shutter priority. The only thing you have to change is your shutter speed. So the only thing that I have to control my exposure is my shutter speed. But of course, this is not one solution, one scenario that fits all. Certain scenes will require a different shutter speed, a very specific shutter speed. If I'm, for example, doing long exposures of clouds, I want them to move in my scene, well, I might want an exposure of 10 to 20 seconds. If I'm shooting moving waters, I know from experience that my sweet spot sits somewhere around half a second or perhaps even a little bit shorter. That's really important for those type of subject matters. And of course, if you're doing Astro, Aurora, whatever, then you need to change your shutter speed based on your subject. But if we're talking general daylight scenes or sunrise sunset scenes, yeah, the shutter speed, it's not all that important. The aperture and the ISO are actually much more important, which means you can allow your shutter speed to be whatever it needs to be for a good exposure. But how do I set it? How do I know my exposure? Well, there's two ways to do it. So let's just circle through my view options here. And what we want to see is the histogram. This little box here, okay? The histogram, as I'm sure most of you know, is basically a representation of what you have in your scene. We're going to just adjust this a little bit so we have something happening here. Okay, we have some grass. That's the only thing we can see. Everything is just basically fog in the background. But this is here is representative. It's good enough for me to tell you what I need to tell you. The histogram here tells us where our values sit in terms of luminosity. So if I change my exposure, you can see that the histogram moves. As this screen gets darker, now you can see the reflection of my little face here in the, in the screen instead because it's just not enough light. And as I move it and increase the exposure, you can see how these kind of like graphs moves to the right and eventually it tops out to the right and we end up with an entirely overexposed white screen. So one way of knowing where your exposure should sit is looking at this histogram here, okay? And basically, you want your histogram to be as far right as possible without touching the right side here. If it touches the right side, which it does right now, the, something in your frame is blown, and that's not acceptable. So you basically need to make sure that you can see the entire histogram. Now we can see we have a clear space between the right-hand side and the actual graph here on my histogram. That, my friends, is a perfect exposure. So all that is left to do now, hit out the focus and expose. 
obviously, if you're shooting on a tripod, use a shutter release or use the built-in timer. And when you're looking at your final result, it doesn't matter if the image looks very bright on the back of your screen. That's actually a good thing. That means that you've exposed to the right. It means that you've moved your entire kind of dynamic range towards the right-hand side of your histogram, towards your highlights. And you have many more values sitting in your highlights than you do in your shadows. So that's a really good thing to do. When you have your raw file imported into Lightroom or whatever you use, you're just going to bring the exposure ever so slightly down, which means that you're avoiding shadow noise. The other way to get your camera to basically show you if something is overexposed, the highlights are clipped, the highlights are pure white, can't be recovered, is when it comes to the Sony to use the Zebra. Other cameras will call it other things. It might be exposure warning, uh, highlight clipping, highlight warning, whatever it might be. Each manufacturer has their own way of doing this. Let's go to a clean screen without our histogram. On this Sony camera, you hit menu, you go down to exposure and color, you go down to zebra display, okay? And zebra display should be on. And the second setting is this one, where you go in to make a custom setting and you put it at lower limit 109 plus. This is super important, okay? The, the normal standard Zebra is something called 100 plus. 100 plus basically shows when something is blown in a JPEG, but we're shooting raw. We don't care when things are blown in JPEG. To show when something is blown in raw, you need custom one or custom two for that matter, lower limit. So lower limit, you have standard plus range, but lower limit is what we want. And we want to put it at 109 plus, because that shows everything that is actually blown, okay? What I do when I'm out shooting is, now again, very simple. ISO is a given, F8 is a given. The only thing I'm going to change is my shutter speed. And the Zebra basically looks like this. As I increase my exposure, you start seeing this Zebra pattern appear across the screen. This Zebra pattern tells me when something is completely blown in the RAW file. So as I now back down, lower my exposure, you can see the Zebra pattern disappearing. And now I can see that everything is as close to being blown as possible, but without being blown. And this means that this is an image that is perfectly exposed to the right. It's, it can't get any better. And this is how I do every single exposure when I'm out. I always shoot in manual. I generally, when I do landscape, I only ever change my shutter speed. And if I were to actually pick something out, because we just had a little change here in the world. Hang on, let's find some autofocus. Let's say that we want to shoot this hut. It's not very appealing, but at least there's a little hut over there. We have the rolling grass, we have the beautiful sky. Basically, when I turn on my camera, let's turn it off. I turn on my camera. It's already at ISO 100 and F8. All I do is increase my exposure until I see the zebra. One, two, three, whatever. And then I back it off. You see, back it on. Overblown sky, clipped highlights. Overexposure, ah, it's critical, this is a useless image. I back it off, maybe I back it off with one or two clicks more. And now I know that, my friends, was the perfect exposure when it comes to the light. This basically means that you have a file that is perfectly exposed. It's exposed as close to highlights clipping as possible, but without the highlights actually clipping. This means you have the perfect raw file every time. As I'm out shooting, I'm always shooting in manual, and I'm always using this method to make sure that I'm not overexposing anything, but I am maximizing the image quality in my files, maximizing the latitude that I have for editing when I get home. Oh, the sun is strong, eh? I've got my sunglasses. What I basically showed you now is that there are two ways to shoot in manual with the Sony camera. You can use the histogram, and you can use the zebra function, the second way. I prefer the zebra function because it's so fast, it's so powerful, it's so visual. When I see the zebra growing across my screen, I know that area is blown. I've obviously used my Sony camera to show you how I work this. But you can do the same thing on a Canyon, a Nikon, a Fuji, a Hasselblad, whatever. It doesn't matter which camera brand you shoot with. All of them can show you the histogram, but only some of them can show you the zebra function. And that is because the zebra function is actually a video function that Sony allows you to use in still photography. Some camera brands does not allow this. 
Some of them have what they call a highlight warning or overexposure warning or etc. And that works basically the same way. Whether or not the limit is raw file being clipped exactly or not, that's something that you have to experiment because I can't tell you that in any brand except the Sony brand that I use so much, but it's so powerful, it's so easy. I find that when I shoot in manual and the manual is so easy, I know exactly the results I'm gonna get from a technical aspect. I can use all of my brain power on the creative aspects of photography. I can use every single little brain cell on actually, hmm, how should I compose this scene? What makes sense to me? What is my subject matter? What draws me in? What excites me about the scene in front of me? And that's what landscape photography is all about. It's about the creative pursuit. It's not about the technicalities of a camera. Shoot in manual, master it in this super simple process that I just showed you, and just enjoy photography, enjoy the creative aspects. I know a lot of you are gonna say, oh, I get the same results with shutter speed priority, I get the same results with aperture priority, blah, blah, blah. I don't think that's true. But as all these kind of things, a lot of it is subjective. This is my workflow to shoot manual with perfect exposures every time. Develop your own process flow, follow it every time. Master your craft, and if you master your craft, you can focus on the creative. Guys and gals, that's all for me today. Uh, I think beautiful up in the Suisse. I got another workshop group coming in a few hours. I'm gonna start preparing for the week ahead, analyzing the weather forecast, looking at the routes we'll be trekking, considering which location we shoot at which time. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you for watching this. If you enjoyed this little tutorial, well, you know what to do. Follow, like, subscribe, I almost said, but that's the same as follow, isn't it, on YouTube? Anyway, have a look at all that. Uh, comment below, is this helpful? Is this a methodology that you might want to implement in your own workflow? Or do you have a workflow that perhaps suits you better? I'd love to hear about it. And uh, yeah, ciao everyone and take care.